Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons build video. Today let's talk about the Untamed. This one is going to be an open world PvE. So let's first talk about the traits that I'm running. I'm running Marksmanship, Beast Mastery, and the Untamed. Untamed entirely top line. Just before the Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons beta finished up on Saturday, I logged in and I captured some extra footage of open world and PvP footage particularly just to showcase the, the beauty of the classes. And I thought, you know what, this would be a great time to just go over some of the builds that I was running with and overall methodology that I was kind of set in stone when playing this beta. So this build in particular, focusing on the Untamed, the entire top line is focused on disabling foes, interrupting them, and controlling them. And so, with that being said, the Grandmaster reduces the cooldown of each one of your selected skills by four seconds upon a successful disabling of a foe, which is quite a lot of a cooldown reduction. Four seconds. Other abilities and traits will often be like one, two seconds, or like three seconds on one particular skill. This is an incredibly powerful Grandmaster in open world, uh, and even in PvP, it's two seconds which honestly is still pretty lovely and additionally the elite skill for the untamed this skill itself will reduce its cooldown with each successful strike so not only are you getting one second of reduction for each enemy hit on the elite if you actually hit a skill that is a controlling skill that's another four seconds on top of it so you're one elite skill can get reduced by nine seconds if you hit up to nine or five enemies so it'll it'll come in handy it surely will and i've had situations where the elite itself comes off a cooldown within probably five to ten seconds on a 90 second cooldown and the elite is actually pretty nice as a survivability tool because it reduces your damage by 50 percent while giving you a bunch of defensive boons like stability resistance and resolution and it is really wonderful to have so open world stuff Honestly, there's not a whole lot of niche with open world. It really is a fun playground for builds. You can build a lot of different play styles in open world and just play them. It really comes down to the player's, you know, expertise. If you want to be playing more niche builds, sometimes you can have a little bit more difficulty, but open world builds for newer players, I recommend running a little bit of toughness and vitality, focusing on power or condition damage, depending on what you want. And most of the time, you'll be able to succeed. In this case, I was going for that almost tanky, bruisery playstyle, which in open world is not much of a thing because, you know, this untamed does not have taunt. And taunt, as a general statement, does not work when there is a break bar, which I don't love, honestly. I think taunt, I've said this in another video, is a condition that has not received the potential that it could. Uh, nor received any love, especially in End of Dragons. And I say this with the utmost transparency and uh, utmost objectiveness. There is not a single ability in End of Dragons Elite Specs that applies taunt. Not one. I believe there are only about five skills in the entire game that apply taunt. And I think like two of them are not really great at all. So I think in open world and in PvE endgame raid and strike missions, Taunt could honestly be a really great aspect for tanks, for those people who want to fulfill that playstyle. But Guild Wars 2 just has not facilitated that yet. Uh, and I really do hope that we see some changes with that. Because I think the Untamed, as it is right now, is not only missing a lot of things, but in terms of the role that it fulfills, I got the impression that the Untamed is more so a bruiser in PvP and World vs. World. Now, in PvP and World vs. World, buffs can be applied. But in PvE, Bruiser Specs and Bruiser Elite Specs do not see a lot of love because there really isn't a reason to play them. Yes, the Untamed has a lot of break bar damage, but there are many other power-focused builds that do even more break bar damage, particularly in raids and in strike missions. Uh, and then even in strike missions, one thing I d entirely dislike about strike missions is that they introduced the Essence system, which made break bars trivial and you no longer needed to become a master of CC and crowd control. What I would love to see is an actual almost trinity system where, you know, an untamed tank and tanks in general 
utilize taunt to manage aggro. And then while a tank is aggroed or whoever is aggroed by a boss, they deal 10%, 15% more break bar damage. So they're not only responsible for manipulating the fight and managing the boss, but also fulfills their niche of being this controlling aspect where they control the phases when phases are, are triggered and allowing themselves either on comms to say, okay, I'm going to wait this out and then I'll blast all of my hard crowd control abilities. And I think the Untamed would be a perfect situation for that because they have so many crowd control abilities, not only on the hammer, but on their utility skills. And many of their trait lines focus on uh, disabling and crowd control abilities. But in open world, in terms of champions and in boss fights, you do get a lot of use out of it because you can chunk down break bars quite quickly. And if you're fighting an enemy, like I am right now, this arrowhead, you are able to easily and rather quickly phase him into his stun lock mode, where you can get a little bit more damage. You don't have to worry about the rolling around, which is also lovely because you can get some nice damage on you. Uh, and then additionally, disabling foes with your traits, you will prevent any crowd control on yourself because with this build, I, I didn't really unleash myself all too often. I was mostly focusing on the pet unleash. And with that said, the traits that I'm taking, when I disable foes while I am not unleashed, I gain stability. So if I'm in a boss such as the arrowhead that basically does CC attacks on every single one of its abilities, I was able to safeguard myself from getting crowd controlled most of the time. However, that did not save me from taking damage. And I end up going down here, I believe, because he rolled in my direction, which I was hoping that he would have rolled the other direction. And uh, my buff could not withstand the, the chunky damage that the arrowhead was dishing out, even with the 50% reduction or either the buff ran out. But overall, I've actually really enjoyed this particular build for an open world setting because your cooldowns come off so quickly and you're able to cycle through your skills so much easier if you have someone in your party that gives you alacrity i mean that's even more that that's even uh more of a reduction to your abilities uh, there was a strike mission that i did with this build where i really smoothly uh was able to get a lot of my abilities off because of the the grandmaster trait and in addition to that the alacrity which is over time hastens them up a little bit and so this build was a lot of fun i i will say that untamed was more enjoyable than i first thought it would be from the trailer but with that said, I do think that there needs to be more of a niche. And honestly, I do think that it would be a really interesting tank for Rangers. Druid was a bit more of a focused support. I would love to see it have a little bit more single target application now that the Spectre has allowed that path to be explored a little bit more. The Soul Beast is a little bit more power damage oriented, additionally with condition damage as well. And then in terms of the Untamed, it's a little bit of an ambiguous area. It's a little power focused, but it's also a little crowd control focused as well, tanking focused, uh, and a little bit focused on the pet. So I feel like they just need to go down that, that road a little bit more. Um, but once again, much more enjoyable than I thought it would be. So thank you everyone so much for coming by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you would like to comment down below your thoughts on the Untamed, as always, subscribe, like the video if you liked it. I have links down below if you'd like to purchase End of Dragons and hit me up on the Patreon, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone! Mwah.